welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got an absolutely bizarre looking puzzle for you today. It's called Squishdoku, and it's by the, the, the great, great Jay Dyer. Um, and I've read the rules to this. It's absolutely bonkers. So basically, this is a normal Sudoku. But that cell, for example, the digit you put in that cell is in this sort of box. It's in, I can't even highlight box one, but imagine that was box one, that three by three box. That digit is in that box while simultaneously being in box two, which constitutes those nine cells. So, so, so some of the cells are sort of squished into two, two boxes. I think that's how it's meant to work. Um, I mean, oh, is it? Pro it's probably only Jay who could come up with something like this. Um, this has got four stars out of five for difficulty over on Logic Masters Germany. So I'm guessing it's it's pretty hard. It's certainly um, a bit brain bending. And we'll have a look at this in a moment or two's time. Uh, I don't have too many uh, bits of news for you today. Um, just an appeal. I think we're in the last, is it 10 or 11 days of the Kickstarter campaign? Now this creates the, the perfect... Um, Perfect puzzle present for Christmas. Fog of War Sudokus by Sandra and Nala, as well, oh, as, well as an extra puzzle by, by Jay as well now. Um, an extra puzzle by Fistemafel now, an extra puzzle by Chili now. Um, a story written by Peter C. Hayward and some beautiful art by Hayley Mooney. So that's, that's really, really cool certainly commend that to you um, do check it out and then over on patreon um, we've got my solve of this puzzle broken secrets by totally normal cat that is another of these very long videos um, for those of you who enjoy such things uh, i mean it is it is a very hard puzzle i think i've been i've been reassured by some of the comments um, from our patrons on on how hard that puzzle is so i i do feel <laughs> The, the hour and 40 minutes that I spent on it were not completely um, completely useless. Um, so that's over there. But the main thing we've got over there is our December competition, which is the 100 snack doku pack. 4x4 Sudokus are plenty, made by 50 different constructors from the Sudoku Skunk Works. Um, they're just they're just all very beautiful puzzles, all intended to only take a couple of minutes each. So there's nothing monstrous there. There's just a lot of very nice Sudokus. So do have a look at that. Um, you've got till the 20th to get your entry in and be in, in with a chance of winning the competition. And I've got some birthdays to do, including some that I'm culpable for being late about. So I, I need to apologize first to Amy whose birthday it was on the 1st of December. Amy, I'm so sorry your sister Sophie wrote to me in plenty of time and I just missed the message. Um, and Amy, I hope you had a great birthday. I hope you weren't upset with me and I hope you had chocolate cake, of course. And also to Paul, who turned 45, um, Paul in Colchester, this is. Your brother Darren wrote to me. I, I, think, I think your birthday was on the 30th of November, Paul, if I remember rightly. And Darren wrote to me on the 29th, having just returned back from what sounds like a very good holiday in South Africa, described it as being full of food, wine, golf and scenery. Well, is there a better holiday that one can imagine than that? Probably not. Um, but it was my fault that I, I, I forgot to read out your birthday, Paul. I hope it was a good one. And you turned the secret as well. So uh, um, an auspicious age for any Sudoku fan. Um, now, two birthdays that are actually today. Jan, over there in Belgium, it's your birthday. And I know it's because your girlfriend, Laura, wrote to us. Apparently, Jan watches daily. So, Jan, I hope you have a great day today. Um, and also, Warren, over there in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, your wife, Holly, wrote to us, Warren, and said you'd appreciate a shout out too. So happy birthday, Warren. I hope you have chocolate cake too. And with all that said and done, let's have a look at Squishdoku and see what is going on in Jay Dyer's latest, um, latest puzzle to exercise our brains. This is what we have to do. Place digits from one to nine in every cell so that no digit repeats in a row, column, or three by three box, or th sorry, th it says three by three region actually. Um, the dashed lines indicate the boundaries of regions 
and cells on the lines are simultaneously part of the regions on both sides of the line. So I think that is how I was explaining I understood this cell. It's in box one and box one is actually that and it's in box two. In fact, let's just explore that cell. What that cell is part of four different boxes. It's part of box one, box two, box four and box five all at the same time. It's sort of double Schrodinger. Um, yeah, OK. And then it says adjacent digits on a green line differ by at least five. So this is a German whispers line. This is a German whispers line. What does that mean? Well, if we put one in the corner here, this square would now have to be at least five different from one. So it would be at least equal to six, uh, etc. And then that cell would have to be at least five different from six. Um, now, I've just, I've just, I was about to say, and that might work in this puzzle. In fact, that doesn't work in this puzzle, does it? Because that one <laughs> is in the same box as this one, because it's on the right-hand side of that line. Um, anyway, and then on a blue line, the sum of the digits on the line is the same in each region the line passes through. Cells on a region boundary count towards both region's sums. What on earth does that mean? So that means that this, what we do, what's that saying? So cell, some of the digits on a line in the same is the same in each region. So those two cells, let's just highlight those in purple. They are the cells that are in box two. <laughs> I can't even highlight box two, but I think those two cells are in box two. And the sum of those two is equal to the sum I want to say of those four, those four cells that are in box three on the blue line. Now this one, which is on a region boundary counts towards both sums. So you could delete that one, I think, because I mean, if this was a one and this was an eight, what that would be saying is that although those two, the purple cells add up to nine, Um, you know, this is this is in the green sum as well, isn't it? So if we were to delete that from both, what we are in fact saying is that those three add up to eight, I think. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit bonkers. This is absolutely bonkers. Do have a go. <laughs> the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I'll restart my clock um, and um, say, let's get cracking. Um, I think I'm going to start with those lines, actually, because I don't really. Well, what we're saying then is that that cell, maybe I shouldn't have deleted what we just did. That's this cell is in, but is, it, it contributes to both regions. So that doesn't contribute to this digit. That digit is the same as the sum of those three cells, I think. Now, those three digits are in the same box, albeit it's a strange squished up box. So that digit is at least a six is something I'm going to claim because those three digits would be at least a one, a two and a three and one, two and three add up to six. So that is at least six. Now this cell, I was about to say is also purple, but that's not true, is it? Oh, this is weird. This is so weird. Um, this digit, that's <laughs> just, in fact, that digit is not purple. I can, I can actually say that it's not purple because that digit, if we look at the, the, the elements of the blue line that are in box six, it's this cell and this cell. So these two cells sum up to the sum of everything on this line that's in box three, which is those cells. So this cell is common. So we can just delete that and say this cell is the sum of those three cells. So it's still true to say, because these three cells have to be different, that that is at least six. But the common, the common digits between the purple sum and the gray sum are those two, these two here. But that Oh, let's get this right. That one contributes to the sum of purple, but that one, which cannot be the same as this one, contributes to the sum of gray. So these two are different. Uh, now, now here's another thought, which might not actually be a sensible thought, but I'm going to just mention it. Where does gray go in box three? 
because it can't go in its column. It definitely can't go there because that cell is in the same box as grey, although it doesn't really look like it might be. It can't go on its own line because then the other elements on the line would have to equal zero. It can't go there because that cell is in box six at the same time as being in box three. Uh, no, OK, this, this didn't work. I, I thought maybe this, this digit was going to be very restricted. But I think it's it's not that. Oh, hang on. Can it go there? No, it still can't. Oh, actually, no, it is a bit restricted. It can't go there either. Because again, that's on the that's on the line in box three, if you see what I mean. I, I mean, I know it, a lot of these things you must be looking at it saying, well, it doesn't really look like it is, but it is. That digit is in box three. It's just simultaneously in box two and it is on the line. So if this if these two were both great, both of those would be zero. And that's not going to work even in Jace puzzle. So I think gray is either there or there. I'm just going to double check that. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Yeah, that's weird. So gray it's only got two positions in box three. Now I'm going to check this one. So purple yeah, it's a lot more restricted than you first think because 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 of all these cells, the, those three cells effectively are in box two. So none of these could have be purple or purple would repeat in box two. Those two can't repeat it on the line. Can't repeat it on the line that this cell here does contribute to the count of, of purple. So purple has a sort of slightly it's got two cells as well. Um, Um, I don't know. So, so if either of them are in the corner, the other one we would know the position of. Oh, I suppose. No, that would be useful. The other thing is, if the purple goes on, goes there, we would know. Um, we'd know something about this green line. Why is my phone buzzing? That's fine. Um, because. Yeah, let's just deal with green line logic. I mean, I, I think I'm going to go here next, but I, I'm just going to mention some green line secrets in case you're new to variant Sudoku. First secret on a green line is because adjacent digits have to differ by five on the line at least, you can't put five on the line. Because if you do, how do you, how do you make this digit work? If you go upwards and you make the digit five different at least, you're going to get to tens and higher. And if you go downwards, you get to zeros and lower, and none of those are Sudoku digits. So five can't go on a line. And what that means is that as you as you move from cell to cell along a green line, you oscillate. Something you, we, we say you oscillate polarity. You're, if your first cell is below five, for example, if this was low, this would have to be high, higher than five, because this digit has to be at least five different from this digit and even if we take the digit one and we only increase it by the minimum amount which would be five we still get to six which is the other side of five and then even if this was nine and we went down as as little as we could we would still get to four which is obviously on the low side of five so you, you would get this sort of pattern whoops you get that sort of pattern. So this this is why it's incredibly important if we can establish that this pink digit or purple digit is on this green line, then we would know that this was a high digit. And these two digits would be low digits. Um, nah. OK, I don't I don't know how we can possibly prove that now. There might be a way but I don't know what it is. I'm going to look at this line. So this line, right. Oh, okay, there's something going on here. Right, so th this, this line has got the same, basically the same property as this line, because that digit, now I don't know yet. Oh, do I know? I do know, that's, that's beautiful actually. I know this digit is a new number. I'm going to just make it orange as a result. How do I know that? Well, I think I know that anyway, because that digit clearly can't be the same as purple. Now, could that digit be grey? And I think the answer is no, because if it, if it was the same as grey, how could you put grey 
in box three. It couldn't go there because that's that's in the same. Um, if this was grey, these two would be in the same box. And obviously it can't go in the corner because that's in the same row. So this is, well, this, this is, again, the, 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 the geometry of this line tells us that this cell is adding up those three digits. Obviously, we could include this in the sum, but there's no point because that's in the sum of these digits and this, 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 this pair if we do that. So these three digits are what, what we add up to get this number. So we're, again, we're adding up to at least six. And we know that this is a third number. Now, this might now... Well, this certainly raises the question, is this the last colour? Let's think about that. So this digit is the sum of those three cells. Which means it is at least six. But I don't yet know. Well, I know it's not orange. I do know it's not orange for exactly the same reason we knew these were different. If the, because, because this is the sum of those three cells. But this is the sum of those three cells. And those two numbers have to be different because they are in the same box by, by squishy logic. So these two are different. And right, and this one can't be grey. So can this, this one here be purple? Right, so the question is, well, it's probably about where purple goes in this box then. So where's purple in? Oh, no, that's a much worse question, actually. That's a much more difficult question. Oh, Robbins, uh, hang on, let me think about this. Um, purple in box one, can't go there, can't go in its own box. But this cell is, I mean, this digit, this line on the left-hand side of the grid has nothing to do with purple, does it? So I don't think we can use the same sorts of strategies to eliminate. I mean, you can put a six on a three cell line because six, one, two add up to nine. If we knew that wasn't a six, then then what could we do? Well, then we would get there. And that would that would do it. If I knew that wasn't a six, we'd be fine. Um, oh, you can see how, look how beautiful this, if, if, if there's a way of proving purple and green are different, that cell, the middle cell of the grid, sees all the high digits and that would be low. Ah! How do we do that? Maybe, okay, maybe we maybe I'm approaching this wrong. Maybe I'm meant to think about where green goes in this box. I don't think that's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Oh no, it's, <laughs> that's so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> okay. This is quite funny in a way. I mean, it, well, it is funny. It's just so ridiculous. How how on earth can green be restricted in box one? And it is because green can't go in in its own column. That's very clear. It can't go in these two squares because these two squares are both in its own box, albeit they're also in box one and that one's in box two and five as well. So it's not in any of those. We know it can't go on its own region sum line because then these squares would have to be zeros. So I think it's in those squares. And if that's true, it clearly cannot be purple. And therefore, that square is low because it sees all the high digits. That's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's so ridiculously clever. Right, so now we know the polarity of this line and that, that is lending credence to the view that purple ends up here. Now, can we perform any whiskers trickery with monogamies here? <laughs> Maybe. I don't think that can be a six. Because these two cells are in, the, they are both in box five, aren't they? 
So in and six is a monogamous digit. It only has one partner uh, on a whispers line. If you put six on a whispers line, the next digit must be a one. So if we make this six, both of those have to be one and they're in the same box. So I think that's not six. Now, what about that one with four? If that's four, both of these are nine. They are both in box six, so that doesn't work. Um, now, for the next, for our next trick, we will argue that. I'm not sure actually. So if this is seven, this is a one, two pair. If, hmm, okay, I've not, I've not got anything now. I'm so, I'm sorry if you can see the next step. I can't see it. My brain feels like it's, it's, it's wading through treacle again. What is this telling me? That was a very interesting digit, isn't it? That digit. That digit's weird as well, I think. Because that digit, well, it has to find a home in the, in the squished up boxes. So that digit is always, that digit always cuts a boundary in box two and therefore by symmetry, it always cuts a boundary in box eight. So it's always in one of the, well, it's in one of these dominoes. So it's, if, if it was there, it would go there. Oh, but, the, but by symmetry, that works, that works exactly the same way in the rows with boxes four and six, doesn't it? So hang on, hang on, hang on. So we've got this sort of, we've got this sort of windmill effect, haven't we, with the red digit. So if the red digit is in this domino, it's forced into that domino, that domino, and that, yeah, okay. So the, the red digit is, is going to be in a pattern either like that or like that. So the red, ah, oh, hang on. So the red digit, the digit in the middle of the puzzle, only appears five times in the puzzle because it's always on a border and when you when when a digit's on a border it contributes to two different boxes and that's how it gets up its count to basically appear it sort of fictitiously appears nine times because if that square was that digit for example it's in two boxes so it counts twice so we're going to so we're going to, if we had that pattern all of these dominoes count twice so we'd have eight, in effect, eight lots of red digit, plus that is a ninth one. Um, now, how has that taken us forward? The answer is, well, the answer is interesting if the red digit is in that domino, because that can't be the red digit. So the red digit would go there. Uh, if it goes there, then it goes there, it goes there, it goes there, doesn't it? Uh, okay, mm, not sure about that one. Um, bother. <laughs> um, okay. Right, so maybe a better question to ask. Ah. Maybe not, though. I was wondering if I could argue that these four digits have to be... Well, that those five digits have to be a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. Now I know you can put six on a three cell, on a three cell 
three cell arrow in effect I mean these are region sum lines but I, you can think of them a bit like arrows like if that was an eight then those three digits are adding up to eight um, if this was a nine you could make that one two six so it is possible I do see that it's possible but what I'm what I'm questioning is if I don't have that digit available in that sequence I mean if that was a one that couldn't work could it no that doesn't work you can't make this one that's quite interesting because if that's a one how do you make what, what digits should we put into these squares and the answer is let's put in the lowest digits we possibly can and we could make that work for example for those we could say they are a two three four triple and this is a five but it does it doesn't work for, for for this one now because although it works for this one which is summing those three digits two plus three plus four is nine so i could write nine in here it can never work for this one because even if i minimize these and take two and three once i add the five in i will get to ten so we can't hide you can't put one into this square now can you put two into it if you put two into it and you minimize these with what's that going to be one three four five we've probably restored parity here because you could put the one in one of these so you, you could have yeah you can do it you can have one three four on one side and one three five on the other and one three five is still only nine so it still just works um so you can put a two here and then it'll definitely work if you put a three there because you can put one and two um, on the line okay so uh, okay so we're getting rid of six from this square because this can't be a two or a three six only goes with one um, and uh, now do i know now i don't know that this is purple do i i want it to be do i want it to i probably do want it to be purple i feel like this is very difficult though these digits i mean they obviously none of them individually can be higher than six you probably have to have a one in one of those as well if you put the one there uh, I'm not sure actually ah okay that is a sensible thought though yes you do have to do that you do have to have the ones here don't you ah got something right Let's think about the three. Let's think about all possible three cell sums in Sudoku that add up to a single digit number. So if you're looking at six, it's one, two, three. Seven is one, two, four. Eight is either one, three, four or one, two, five. Nine is either one, two, six, one, three, five or two, three, four. Now there is a commonality between all of those options which is that they all include two low numbers twos two of the digits one two and three and that's I mean another way of proving that to yourself is to try and do it with only one if you only got one of the numbers let's pick the lowest one one and you add four and five to it you get ten that's no good that's no good so every single three cell sum needs two of the digits one two and three in it so how do we do that here how do we do that it, it, with this weird rule that we've got going on if i was to put what ones twos and a one two three option here it's fine for this one which is adding these three but it's not fine for this one which could now only be a one four five at minimum so that cannot work so these two have to be one two and three we have to because this sequence must involve two low digits and can't involve this digit and this sequence must involve two low digits and can't involve this digit these are from one two and three and therefore one of those is a one 
And now, right, and now box three has got a one, two, three triple in it, which means that the other cells which are adding up uh, to these totals include, will have to be from four, five, and six. Oh, I think we're close to, we're close to understanding this now. This feels like a big, well, this is right. I see. Oh, this was obvious. Oh, no, 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 no. I've had a horrible thought. I'm so sorry. I'm, I've been very slow here. The moment we got this as two or three, how could either of these have been six? Well, they obviously can't be because I can't put one, two, three there and I can't put one, two, three there if that is a two or a three. So neither of these could ever have been six. And that means because these are all different, one of these is six. And that means either that is one, two, three, which would give us a triple in the top row. Or this is one, two, three, which means these two squares are definitely from one, two and three. So that digit, well, yes, okay, that's, I was about to say something I thought then was going to be proved wrong, but it's not wrong. That digit, oh no, I shouldn't do that green against the back. Let's make that, I was going to try and make it blue and I hit yellow and yellow's quite nice, isn't it there? So this digit has to appear in whichever one of these is sixes, one, two, three, triple on this line in box one so that digit but it can't go there because that digit is in the same box as this digit it's just a very squished box so it's not there and it's not here so it must be one of those two so that digit is in one of those two squares now What does that mean? I don't know. I wish I did know. <laughs> um, right, let me think about this. I'm not sure. Oh, this is so brain-bendingly odd. It really is odd. <laughs> Just trying to understand what's going on here. Um, so. Oh, it's doing my head in. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me think about this. I think there's something going on with the low digits now, but I can't fathom it. And every time I start my brain whirring on this, this topic, my brain, my brain backfires and resists. Um, so I know these are not six. Do I? Oh, I don't know. What about that digit? Do we know what that where that digit now goes in this? But I know because that digit could be six. And if that digit's six, well, it can't go there, but it could go there. And then it would have to go there, I suppose, which would tell us that green was here. So I've got I've got two low digits here. I don't know. I'm just not quite seeing this, am I? I'm sorry. If you if you can all see what I'm meant to do here, well done. This is not. I'm not finding this easy at all. Um, what I what I've been trying to do in my brain and failing is I've been looking thinking about these two digits, which I know have to be on the six arrow in this box, and I'm trying to in my own mind yeah you see it, it is a bit weird this you know yeah okay maybe maybe this is a way of doing it 
if this was a low digit, maybe I've got, I think maybe I'm doing it backwards again in my brain and I sh if I do it forwards, it will help me. Look, if I want to look at that digit very specifically. So this is on the presumption that this is a six. So I want to ask, can that be one, two or three? Now I don't know the answer to this yet, but I want to just think about it because when I just did it in my head, I couldn't make it work. I, I don't, I think there's a problem with this. I think there's a problem because this digit has to be one of those two digits, doesn't it? It's definitely not that digit. So in the one, two, three triple that exists in box three, that digit is in one of those two squares. Okay. So let's say that this was the blue digit. Well, now we've got the problem that I have to put the blue digit in, in the squishy box two somewhere. It's got to be in there. Where are we going to put it? Because by Sudoku, it's either there or there. But whichever one of those you put it in, it's already in a box with a blue digit. <laughs> so that is not blue. So this is blue. But that's no better. Because now where do I put blue in this box? I've got to put it there. And it's still in the same box as it's already it's already there, isn't it? So, so the way I needed to think about this was was not from these ones perspective per se it was actually from which one of which one of these has the third one two and three on it and it can't be this one which means that must be a one two or three let's make it blue for the sake of consistency and now blue is a different digit to yellow blue is a different digit to that which is in its row so that square is blue and OK, and that's OK. That's OK, because we don't now have to put blue into box two because it's already in box two because it's there. Ah, but we know this is a six because the only way you can get to six is to add those digits. So six comes out of orange. Um, now, what does that mean? So that digit. Right, let's give that a color. We'll make that digit light green so that digit is the third of one two and three which must be in this triple and therefore must be here so that's and therefore that digit is the yellow digit which is a two or a three so one of these digits is a one and Oh, this is beautiful. And now I can ask where gr I've still got to put the green digit, the light green digit into box two. It can't go here because that's that's a multi-purpose digit. That's definitely already in box one. So it has to go there. So that's that is a low digit. Oh. Well, wait a second, though. Oh, I've just had a really cool thought. Um, when we looked at the red digit, I thought that the red... No, that's fine, isn't it? No, it's not fine. It's not fine. The red digit, I thought, had to o occupy a windmill pattern like that or its equivalent rotated just one one step further but if if so if that's the blue digit that that doesn't work cuz blue's there oh yeah i no uh, yes i see i see how to do this a different way i was thinking about i could do it i i think i could have done it using complicated logic i don't think i need to where's blue in box um that box 6 squishy box 6 it's not that digit, so it's it's in one of these two squares, isn't it? It's it's got to be in one of those two squares. Ah, oh, so can I? Maybe I can't do it actually. No, all right. So no, I can't. I couldn't do it as simply as I thought. I can do it. I can do it in a complicated way. All right. So now I'm going to ask, where's blue in the squishy box four? <laughs> so, I mean, this is yet another of these puzzles where I feel I might have the ability to solve it, and I hope that's not famous last words, but 
I am just lost in how you how how you come up with the idea for it, and then how you execute it with this sort of panache. It is. It is Serrano de Bergerac esque. It, that is what it is. Look, where is blue in box four? Not there. Not there. But not in these two squares because they are in box one, which has a blue in it already as well. So blue is in one of these two squares in box four, but it's not in that one by Sudoku. So blue is actually there. I hadn't actually realised I could get it down to one square, but I thought it was in one of those two, but I forgot that that one's knocked out. Yeah, that's right. So that's blue. And now this square is a four because it sees all the different colours of low digits. So that's a four, which means that's a nine on the whisper because the four is monogamous, just as six is monogamous. So nine comes out of here. Nine comes out of that one, actually, because those two are in the same box. For some reason, that feels anathema to me, but it's true, isn't it? So these are a seven, eight pair. Ah, but where does... What's... What's this nine now? What What is it? What colour is it? There's a six in one of those two squares, according to my pencil marks, or colour pencil marks. Oh, my phone is going nuts again. This is WhatsApp. Does anyone else have this problem with WhatsApp? It just buzzes all the time. So what have we actually learned then? I mean, I know we've learned some things, but are they useful things? I'm not sure. Um, I think we can do... See, these digits are just profoundly powerful, aren't they? What about, see, oh, I don't know. I wish I could understand this. Come on, Simon, use your brain. So, okay, so nine may be in that box. I think it's fair to say is in one of two positions. Now, do I know one of those is a nine or not? I know that grey is not, isn't, I think I do, oh, I do actually know that, don't I? That's true. I do know that one of these is a nine because in the panoply of digits that were the six, seven, eight, nine quadruple, grey is now not nine and the other two must therefore include nine. So there is definitely a nine in one of those. Right, right. So where is nine in box one? Is an interesting question because I, we can't we've already got two nines in the top two rows so we can't have more nines up here we can't put nine here because that's going to contribute to the sum of this cell which is going to therefore be greater than nine and it can't put nine there because that, that cell is already in a box with that nine so I think that's a nine but that doesn't do anything. This is such a strange puzzle. It's just so peculiar. Okay, so maybe, maybe a better question then. Ah, ah, okay, maybe a better question. Where's blue in this box then? Is that the question I'm supposed to ask next? It's not there by this blue. It's not here, I don't think, because I seem to have blue in box six in one of two places. So I don't think I can make that blue and still put a blue in box six. So it's not there. So that's blue. Okay, so that's not blue then. So this is a one, two, or a three. That gives me a one, two, three. Well, it means they're so, it's so clever, this. It's so clever because we've gone from learning that this square is now, well, how, how do we do this? Yeah, it, it, it's sort of a beautiful iteration on this middle square. Firstly, Jay managed to explain to us that these squares 
knock that square out from being a high digit. Then we managed to get the low digits, all the one, two and threes pointing at this, so it had to be a four. But now all of the one, two, three and four point at that square, which means that square is high. So that's six, seven or eight. It can't be nine because we've got the nine here. So that's six, seven or eight. So this is one, two, three or oh, and there's nothing else. Oh, right. Hang on. So that's this is light. It can't be four because this can't be nine. And now that's light green because it must be the other color that we've not got in this column. So that's light green. Oh, now I've not put light green into box six. So where is it going? It can't go there because that's also in box nine. So it goes there. Wow. I wanted to put light green in there. So that's right. Now we've got a one, two, three, triple, a seven, eight. Oh, this is four, five and six then. Because this box, it was absolutely comedy pencil marking. But if we look at everything on the boundary, those, that's a one, two, three, triple. That's a seven, eight pair. That's a nine. So these other ones must be four, five, and six. Um, right, let's keep going down this line. So this is six, seven, eight, or nine now. Um, it's not seven or eight, is it? Oh, can we get, can we prove this isn't, yeah, we can. That can't be six. Six is monogamous. Both of those would be ones. They're both in the same box. So that's nine. Ah, now, now. Nine is then in the corner of the grid. Now, that seems to mean this is nine, which is the purple digit. So, so that's not purple. So nine, nine is purple. Nine is purple. Let's just click the nines and make them all purple. So, so it, it's probably true, isn't it, that one, two, if we count this as two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so either we're going to end up with a nine on a boundary, or there's going to be a nine, for example. No, you can't put a nine there. Yeah, where's the nine in this box? It's not in any of those by Sudoku. It's not there by Sudoku. It can't go there because it would share boxes. So it goes there. And that is, I think, the total number of nines it's possible to put. If we count the ones across the border as two each, that gives us a total of nine. And that corner square is one, two, three or four. Look, but it's not it's not those two. So it's either yellow, which is that one or four. Uh, which I don't know if that's possible or not. Might be possible. So where are seven and eight in this box? Because we've got this seven, eight pair here. That's not actually, that's not nine now. Um, what? Well, yeah, where are seven and eight? That Does that have to be orange then? Because gray, gray and orange were different. Yeah, so that is orange. And that's now grey as the only place for grey in box three. And this is a four, five or a six. There's a sort of four, five, six triple across box three's squished, squished up parameters. I've got right. These two squares are from four, five and six. That's in the squished box two. And that one can't be four because we put a four in the middle of the grid. So that's five or six. There's a six by pencil marking here. So that's not six. So all I've got to do is work out. Ah, that square is a seven or an eight. And that is the sum of those three digits. And they can't include six. So that's a four or five pair. That's a six in box in box. Oh, that's not what I was expecting, though. No, that's fine. Um, because that six is in a sum. Look, it's in the sum of these, which tells us if that six is in the sum, this must be a one, two pair that accompany it in order to only give us a count of nine rather than anything higher. So in fact, now all of the blues. Oh, hang on. It won't do that. All of the blues are not three. All of the greens are not three. So the one that's three is is the is the yellow digit. The yellow digit is three. And therefore that oh uh, look the whisper. Can't put seven there. It would be too close. So that's got to be eight. That's seven. That's seven. 
that's eight. That is right. Oh, where's where's eight in box one? I think it's got to go there. So that is six, which means that's five. Right. Let's let's tidy up some pen some colouring now because I'm getting confused. Um, this box has not had four in it, which which I think from the logic I was doing before, I think it's going to have to go there. I don't think it can go in the corner. Um, but let's just check. What's the other digit? Seven. We've not put in. Well, we can't put seven on the on the on the line that adds up to eight. So seven goes in the corner. This is four. And yeah, and that works because eight is equal to three plus four plus one if we make one green. So one is green, two is blue. Now let's just check, is this work? Ah, hang on. Oh, I see. And this is seven, which is the sum of those. So that's got to be four, that's got to be five. I love the way I have no idea what that digit is, even though it's the last digit in its row. Um, that digit is, well, I think that digit is a six by the fact that in this box I have to put a six and there's a six looking at these two. So I think that's a six, which means these are seven and eight. That's, that's seven, that's eight. We'll do the colouring in a minute. This box has not had one and three in it, so we can put those in. These squares don't include six, so this is five and four by Sudoku. That square in the corner is not four or one or two. Ah. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. <laughs> Losing its religion. Oh, that's so funny. Now we've got six, seven and eight. Oh, where's seven in this box? It's got to go there. Eight's got to go there. Six has got to go there. It's this Sudoku, I think, that's going to get us there. That's got to put four in this box, three and five. And in this box, we've got to put in two, five, six, eight. Uh, so this is a two, eight pair. So that's eight and that's two. And this is six and this is five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Something like that, I think is the answer, right? Let's double click everything. Grays, eights are orange, sixes were dark green. Do we have any other colors for things? Yes, threes were yellow, twos were blue. Um, ones were something ones were light green is it just fours and fives that i didn't oh well fours i did have as red so fives didn't get a color but one two three four five six seven eight there are five fives well there are nine fives sorry there are five fives in the grid but they count for nine because that one counts as four um so let's just see this that's four five six seven eight oh, it's so beautiful is this right yeah it is right isn't that clever? Good grief, Jay. That's another stunning, stunning puzzle. Ridiculous. And yeah, it's a it's a perfect example of the form. I mean, can you imagine having the idea for this and then executing it like that with this sort of iterative, iterative approach to the low digits and ha and spotting that there was this this possible interaction on this central square and then that that had an effect on this square it's been constructed with just unbelievable skill and insight loved it let me know in the comments if you had a go i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and especially when they give a lot of kudos to jay dyer and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic